buying behavior. I want to just quickly talk about buying behavior and what is your buying behavior as a person. Like what sorts of things do you buy? You go to the supermarket for your weekly grocery shopping or the market where you get your fresh fruit and vegetables and your food for the week or for the month for your family, uh, for your household. I want to just quickly explore your buying behavior. I was the other day. I was in the supermarket doing the grocery shopping and not picking up a huge, uh, a huge grocery shop, just enough to keep the household going for a couple of days. And I was, what, I would just observe myself browsing, uh, browsing down the aisles. There's a ton of great products. You know, the breakfast cereal, the fresh fruit and vegetables. Uh, you know, the pasta, the sauces, the, you know, the cleaning products, the frozen section, and everything's out on display. And I think what was really interesting is that I was I saw myself like you know looking and investigating and checking out some new products that I that were on the shelves that I hadn't seen before and I was investigating them and you know looking at the ingredients and looking at you know whether that might be something that I'd like to try or use you know different sorts of um, you know prepackaged sauces and those sorts of things um, by and large um, I make food from scratch so as it from a cook and, and those sorts of things uh, I use fresh fruit and vegetables as um, you know, as my as my basis and, and fresh protein as my basis, I tend not to buy prepackaged foods. Comment below what you do. Do you buy prepackaged stuff because it's quick and easy, or comment below and let me know that you love to cook from scratch. But this isn't a cooking segment. Segment. It's about observing yourself as a buyer. And I observe myself browsing, and I observe myself checking things out, and then the things that I actually wanted, I put into my shopping trolley. I helped myself. I put them into my cart, and I took them to the front of the store. And I, you know, the the, the checkout person scanned all of the um, scanned all of my groceries, and then I paid for them, and then I put them in, you know, in the bags that I have. I have reusable bags, and then uh, and then put them in my car and went home and unpacked it. But as I just wanted to unpack that buying experience from my from my own perspective, I'm browsing through, I'm checking out the products, but I only pick the products that I want. I put them in the cart and I went to the checkout and I said, here, I want to buy these. So, so what I really wanted to talk about today was about sales. There's been some criticism um, and some interesting uh, polar opposite discussions about sales and the criticism of salespeople and that they could be slimy, they could be dodgy, you know, they're trying to get people to buy things that they don't necessarily want. And some of this opinion and, and commentary has come from internally at Best Practice where we've really been debating what it is that is the true, uh, I guess the true element, um, the, the, the true essence of a, of a highly professional salesperson. And by and large, we're all salespeople because we're all working every day in a working environment to be influencing the team around us, influencing the people around us. And what I noticed was that from a sales perspective, certainly I've been selling a large part of my work every day, certainly for the last 20 years, a large component of what I do is, is selling because it's, you know, I'm the front of the business. I'm trying to help people come through and, um, you know, and, and, and match up our services with, with what their challenges and their problems are because our services that we have at Best Practice solve, you know, they are the solution, they're created because they're the solution to a problem. So what I want you to ask yourself is ask yourself this question, what's your opinion of yourself as a buyer? What's your opinion of salespeople? And, and you might have a belief system because I know, I know some salespeople that are not as professional that, as they could be and I'll explain that in a second and I know a bunch of buyers who are not as professional as they could be and by and large, the people that I see that are buyers that complain about salespeople are not professional buyers. And what I mean by this is they're not clear on what they want. They're not clear on their communication. They sort of hold their cards close to their chest and they say, oh, you know, I, don't, I, don't, I really don't want to give you too much information. You know, I'm just looking into this and I'm just exploring and, I, you know, I, I can't commit too much information. But, but is that a confidence thing from your perspective or are you making up that you need to be impartial in the buying process? Because to engage at a professional level with a professional salesperson, I want to ask you this question as a buyer and a seller. As a buyer, as somebody who's working as a systems manager, or you're working as in a, you know in an organisational role, improvement role, uh, any role in your business, I want you to ask yourself this question: What does for you the highly professional salesperson, the five-star version of the salesperson, look like for you? What do they look like? So when you want someone to come and present to you, you've got a challenge, you've got a problem, and you're you're looking out into the marketplace, and people are coming and making presentations to you. And, and they're presenting their products and services, their price, their proposal, their value, their benefits, 
um, you know, the, the challenges, the timeline, all those sorts of things, I want to ask yourself this question. What does this, the five-star version of that person look like for you? What is the five-star sales professional, business development professional that's gonna come out and see you and present to you? What do they look like? What do they do? What are they communicating? What's in their presentation? I want you to think about that five-star version of the situation. That high-performance person that is also gonna give you some advice to say, actually, you know what? The product or service that I represent actually isn't gonna solve your problem. I'm gonna walk away, because I do that a lot. I do that with a lot of people where I say, you know what, actually, I, I can't help you. And they're like, yes, you can, yes, you can. I'm like, no, I'm not gonna be able to help you because you guys have got too many challenges, you've got too many uh, belief systems that don't align with our belief systems. Yes, you can buy our service. Yes, you could engage with us. Yes, we could come out and try and provide our service, but you guys have got issues in your organization and we we challenging ourselves every day to provide a five-star service but you guys have got problems, you're gonna complain about us. Things are gonna go wrong, and, and it's never one person's fault, it's both parties on the side of it. My fault in that instance will be actually saying, yes, I'm gonna provide my service. So as a buyer, I want you to be aware of that. Now, when you picture that five-star business development professional and that five-star organizational supplier or contractor that you're gonna engage with, now, this is where it's really challenging and where the mirror goes up. What will their expect expectations if they are that highly professional person if they are that highly professional business development highly professional organization that's the five-star version that are your expectations what are they going to expect of you because if they're a five-star professional they're going to expect you to be a five-star professional so the second part of this activity I'd like you to do is sit and think about are we presenting ourselves as a five-star buyer are we presenting ourselves as a five-star customer and as a sales professional, there's a couple of things. One is payment terms. It is never clearly spoken about as much as I ask for it. It's something that people, particularly when I'm engaging with people in a sales process, they don't declare that they are always late with their payments. And we do the deal, we present the five-star situation, but then we end up with a customer who never pays on time. There's, the payments are always questioned. It matches exactly the quote that we issued. Uh, there's always excuses. And the, that organization that we engage with is not managing their cash flow. They're not managing their profitability. They're not a professional organization. And while we're working with them to try to improve that, that makes our life really hard because we effectively go and provide all of our services and do that for free. So it's not a rant, but it's this week particularly, there's been these issues, there's been this debate about, you know, um, maybe overselling, you know, the, the significant amount of communication and media that goes out from best practice to help people and it's designed to help you. It's all for free, but there's, it's, it's sparked this debate about, well, what's professional selling? What is the five-star version of the situation? How can we do that from a best practice perspective? And it really, it really triggered my thoughts to say, well, you know, I'm gonna keep working on improving our winning formula. And we were debating the winning formula yesterday um, at best practice. But I want you to think about that. What's the winning formula for purchasing? What's the winning formula in that engagement when you when you have that meeting and you're sitting each side of the table in that sales presentation? Have a think about that. I want you to really be thinking about what is it that we can do to be a five-star buyer? Can we be prepared? Can we do our research? Can we do our due diligence on the people that are coming to present? Because I turn up at a lot of meetings and people basically sit in those meetings and they've done no research on us. So the first thing that happens is, the first words out of my mouth, you know, we walk in the door, first impression, the best practice shirt, the brand, that sort of stuff, they haven't done their research. So I want you as a buyer to be really thinking about this. I want you as a buyer to be saying, I'm gonna do my due diligence, I'm gonna stalk these people. This is 2019, there is social media, there is the internet, there is Google, there is Google search, there is Google images search, there is YouTube, there is so much information that we as organizations in doing marketing and selling are putting out into the internet that it is unprofessional of you to ask a supplier to come and present and you have not done your research and you have not done your investigation beforehand and looked into the organization and looked at who is coming to see you, LinkedIn, the, the individual people that are coming to the meeting, all of them, even if they're from your organization, have a look at their LinkedIn profile, have a look at their website, have a look at their Facebook page, have a look at their personal Instagram. 
take the time to do the stalking of the people that are coming to meet with you so that you can you can your first impression will be the impression that you get from all of that internet footprint so that when the meeting starts you can get straight down to business as a professional purchasing procurement person a professional in your role in your organization so that they can go and you know they can basically start talking to have they got the solution to your problem so that's a tip for today. I'm just trying to get as many videos out for you guys as possible, doing them from the car. Today I'm in back-to-back -back meetings all day. I will try to do the Wednesday live stream for you. I hope you've had a great time. I hope everybody's going really well. I want you to comment below. Was this useful for you? Did it challenge you to think about it? The final summary, the, top, the conclusion, the tip is picturing the five-star business development professional that you would engage with, picturing the five-star yourself expectation that they might have for you as somebody who does their research and you know who you're talking to if you make your decision based on your first impressions that's not a problem that's not unprofessional but i want you to be ensuring that when someone's coming to meet with you and they're making a presentation that you have researched that person and stalked that person before the meeting i think that's really really important that's the one thing that you can do to really change and be a more professional buyer so i hope this helped if you've got any specific personal questions for me, hit me up on LinkedIn, at Kobe Simmet is my handle on LinkedIn. We'll drop that in the comments below, in the description below the video. Um, if you've got more videos, don't forget to smash that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. If you really like this video, give us a like. And more importantly, if I said something that you need someone in your organization to hear, did you think of someone in your network, one of your friends, one of your colleagues, anybody in your organization, did you think of somebody? I want you to copy the link of this video and I want you to text or email it to them and get them, get them to have a watch. Now, I appreciate it's a nine or a 10 minute video. It's a, it's a bunch of stuff here, but I want you to think about, can I actually send that and share that link so that we can get the message out there and we can all improve our organizations into the future. So. I'll see you, if I don't see you right here on the YouTube channel, I'll definitely see you next time right here on Best Practice TV. Bye for now.